Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our first ever evening Tech Byte session. Um, so thank you very much for giving us your time this evening and, and for joining us. Um, I've got a great panel to introduce you to. Uh, but before we start, I wanted to give you an update on 100% Optical. Obviously, um, with the news last week around events, uh, we felt it prudent to move the dates of 100% Optical for 2021. Um, uh, we were fortunate that XL London had a backup date for us, which we always had uh, penciled in, should we need it. And uh, obviously, um, with the news that we've had over the last few days, it became pretty clear that we should do that and move the show to what we feel will be a much safer time um, when hopefully we've got lots of tools to deal with the virus and, and, and how to run events safely. Um, we know we can do them safely. Our industry association know that we can do them safely. They've even run pilots to, to do that. You know, if, if you can have two, three hundred people walking around a supermarket, then certainly an exhibition can be safe. We know that, but the time will come very soon when we can prove that to everybody else. So uh, we're working hard to deliver 100% optical for you in May. So hopefully we'll see you there. Um, so on with today, and I am will be recording this webinar. So you can go back. Did you miss anything or want to share it with friends? And it's free to free to download and watch whenever you like. So you can get that on our um, webinar channel. Um, also, uh, we want today to be as interactive as possible and informative. And we've got uh, some J uh, some PDFs for you to download. Um, on the panel there, you can see there's a handout section. So if you want to download, there's a couple on there from um, a couple of our speakers today. So at any time you can download those. As I say, we want it to be interactive. So once we've done all our presentations today, uh, we'll be asking you to ask questions. And you can either do that by typing into the, the box on, on the screen there, the question box, or you can raise your hand and we'll turn on your microphone and uh, you can ask people directly. Um, obviously, that we'd prefer that if you want to do that, because it just uh, we want to hear you, we want to want to hear what you've got to say. Um, but, but either way is fine. So we'll do that at the end. So um, onwards then to our speakers today. So I'm introducing them in order. So first we've got uh, Brett War, uh, MD, Ashton Riley, Sharon Ormond from uh, the Sales Director for, for Optos, Emily Andrews, Product Director at iSpace, Andy Clark, uh, CEO, Founder of, uh, of, of Practice Building, Dan Daly as well, Acuity CEO and uh, Founder of Acuity, and my co-host, J3 Vasani, who um, has been doing these with me all along, and uh, um, CET uh, trainer, ABDO examiner, and obviously co-host today. So hi, J3, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Nice to be back. Very well, thanks. Very well. So yes, it's a little while since we've done these. We had a bit of a break mm -hmm. in August whilst, um, whilst the summer was on, but I think, um, you know, obviously, this is, uh, we're doing this at this time through to popular demand when people said this was a good time to do it. Obviously, give us your feedback, but uh, yeah. So, um, day three, I'm going to hand over to you to um, introduce our, our speakers today. Okay, great. Well, we've got a fantastic lineup, five exciting speakers. So, let's get moving. Uh, we'll, we'll do the first one, and that's Brett. Okay, so Brett Wall is the MD of Eyewear Direct. Brett has worked in optics for a number of years with several roles at Fabris Lane Limited culminating in Commercial Director of UK and Republic of Ireland. After a brief spell at Red Eyewear, Brett is now the Managing Director of Eyewear Direct, which manufactures and distributes eyewear all over the world, including designing and manufacturing sunglasses and optical frames for other brands and retailers' own brand collections. Uh, Brett will be, managing, will be presenting Ashton Riley today, and we need to do your two minutes, Brett, so two minutes about yourself, your book, app, or life pack, please, first. Okay, so hi, everybody. Uh, really pleased to be here. This is the first one of these I've done, so apologies if uh, I get muddled up. Um, so me, I spent uh, 18 years working for eyewear companies before I started my own company, Eyewear Direct. I did a host of roles. So I started, strangely came into eyewear through IT. So I started up as an IT guy, uh, worked my way through Fabris Lane, uh, customer service, merchandising, uh, product development, ma account management, commercial director, ultimately, um, and then moved on to Red Eyewear and spent a few years there um, 
working with that, working with a great team there. Um, what it did working with the, within these two businesses was it gave me a great insight as to what a successful business can be and and the strengths of a business that I would want to create when when the time came right for me. So two years ago, we created Arvo Direct with a real focus on on partnership. So everyone we work with, whether that be um, suppliers or customers, we we approach everything with a view to partnership and long term relationships. And uh, so far, it's been great, and we've had a really great response from customers, and we're looking forward to getting a few more from uh, talking to people today. Great. Okay. And your book or your app on so, your iPad? Yeah. So my book that I wanted to share was uh, called Factfulness by Hans Rosling. Um, uh, it's a book I came across a couple of years ago. Um, I'm not sure where I found it, but it was it just opened my eyes to a number um of insights around the world and the state of the world as it is now um in a way that i i had not really realized and it made me sort of question um a lot of my preconceptions which is never a bad thing i think so i'd recommend it to anyone great that's lovely thank you are you ready to start your five minute pitch i can indeed okay. so five hi everybody Go oh, sorry <laughs> brilliant okay so five minutes so Ashton Riley was a brand we created um, really because we wanted to put something, uh, work on something with our customers that was more than just uh, an eyewear collection. We were selling frames to our customers already. We were manufacturing, designing, and um, putting together collections for uh, retailers in their own right, but we were also selling to independent opticians uh, collections that we had brought to market. We want to do something a little bit different and we wanted to you know, it's really a work on that partnership um, connection that we we held so dear when we were creating this business. Um, so what we decided was, if we were going to create a brand and we were going to ask people to back our brand and stock it and sell it to their customers, there was a few things that we felt we needed to do. We needed to deliver value for money that they couldn't get anywhere else. So better product for the price they were paying, um, and not just a bit better, but much better. Um, it was important to us that we were giving back. So everyone that got on board with our brand, we would give them, we have a scheme called AR points. So we would give points to our customers and those points, the more frames they buy or the more pounds they spend, the more points they get, the bigger discounts they get. So it becomes a self-fulfilling uh, relationship. The more they work with us, the more they get back. Um, but the big element that was different for us was that we give shares to all of our stockists. So, Every stockist that that buys frames from us and, and, and presents them to their customers will will get shares in the brand itself. So we're working really hard to build up Ashton Riley, and we've got hundreds of stockists now. Um, in a relatively short space of time, we've we've built that up. Um, once Ashton Riley gets to a point where it's self-sufficient, so it's not being supported by Iowa Direct, um, in, um, uh, at that point. We will separate Ashton Riley off into its own limited company and issue shares to all the people that have been stocking the brand, buying the frames uh, in the meantime. So we are the AR points that we give out. So for every pound you spend on Ashton Riley frames, you get a point. And those AR points are building up and they will continue to build up until the point where we um, separate the company off, uh, at which point, depending on how many points you've generated, will will be flipped into shares for you in the business. Um, and we just felt it was a bit of a no-brainer to sort of say to people, look, if we're going to ask you to back our brand, then what? Why would, why would you do that if you weren't getting something out of it? Why do you always keep on stocking other people's brands? Well, this way you're stocking your own brand. It's not just our brand. We work together on it. We get feedback every day from stockists saying, can I have frames that are a bit more like this or a bit more like that? And we work hard to develop frames then that we know are going to be successful for those stockists because it means they get more out of it too. So it, it really is a two-way thing and a, and a partnership that we're working on. Um, the, the products themselves. So we, I'll quickly show you some of the products. Um, so we've got uh, high-quality acetates. So we try to we try to keep the shapes um, nice and um, nice and commercial so that our customers can move them quite quickly because ultimately it's about turning the frames over for our customers. Um, but we get we play around with the colour a bit. So as you can see on a couple of these, we've got a nice 
He's doing it against my face, might be better against here. Got a nice green, green with tortoise shell. Um, we've also got some high quality stainless steel. So this one's got um, a dual coating as well. So you've got a bronze um, on the top and the sides with a gold on the front. So we're and we've recently, and this was directly from feedback from our customers, we've recently introduced titanium. Um, so this wasn't part of the plan for me to have this in the collection, but customers came to us and said, no, we love the product. We love how you pitched it and where you positioned it. Can you do some titanium for us? So that's exactly what we did. We took that feedback and we built it into the range. So it really is a, a, a partnership that we're working on. Um, and we, we're here today because we want more people to become part of that uh, and to benefit from from what we're putting together. Um, the price of the frames, uh, the Astromari frames are 20, 20 pounds. Um, obviously there's discounts available, the more the more AR points you build up. The titaniums that we've just launched are 29 pounds. So, and I, I, I know from personal feedback from multiple, multiple stockists that the quality of these frames is you know, excellent for that price. Um, so we are, we're keen to have more people on board and, and be working with more people and, and as importantly, to get more feedback. So we're happy to come and see anybody, even if they just want to look at the collection, because the more feedback we get, the better product we can put together and the, and the, the better we can service our customers. Thank you very much. Amazing, Dan. You had six seconds left. Well done. Wow. Well done. <laughs> That's it. Look at that. That's well, brilliant. Set the bar high there, Brett. Set the bar high. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Right. Let's get Sharon on board now. Okay. Let's get Sharon there. Okay. Let's just see if we can get her on. Okay. I'll do Sharon's introduction. There we are. There she is. Hi, I Sharon. Had your six seconds, Brett. Uh, <laughs> okay, so welcome, Sharon, from Optos. Sharon has worked for EMI, Bolsh and Lom, and for the last nine years for Optos. Her specialties include leading, motivating, and inspiring teams to exceed objectives, training, coaching, and developing people. Combined with high performance selling skills, and the ability to coach people to a high standard, Sharon leads her team as the sales director of Northern Europe at Optos. Okay, Sharon, over to you. Two minutes about yourself and uh, your app or life hack or book. Um, so my two minutes about myself would be, uh, as you mentioned, working for Optos for the last nine years, um, incredibly passionate about the company and the technology. It's genuinely hard not to be when um, you know you see this technology picking up pathology that saves patients' sight or saves a patient's life that just wouldn't be in any other way. Um, we have uh, sorry, can you see my screen? <laughs> uh, not yet. No, nope. okay. Um, and, um, you know, so, yeah, just incredibly passionate about the technology. And uh, outside of that, um, I live with my partner, Aaron, uh, and our dog, Ace. And we have uh, three beautiful horses as well. Uh, so it. that's a big passion outside of outside of Optos. Um, right. My life hack would be recently I was unfortunate enough to break my shoulder. Oh, uh, dear. Yep, this was doing a very dangerous act of hanging a picture. So uh, nothing to do with the horses. And um, from that, I discovered that Outlook has dictate options. And mm -hmm. what oh, wow. has dictate options? Because right. Break, right shoulder and being right handed, typing with my left, writing with my left, um, doing pretty much anything with my left has been nigh and impossible. So mm -hmm. dictate has been an absolute lifesaver. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's one for all of us. Brilliant. Well, that's great news, isn't it? Okay. Do you want to see if you can do your screen bit, share your screen bit? Let's see if we get you moving sure. with that. Let's see if all that works for you. Right. Here we go. So let me know when you want to your first, uh, you know, slide on, and then you can say you're ready to go, and we can start the timer. Okay. Right. Ready? Yeah, we're ready. Go. Okay. 
So a little bit about Optos. We were founded in 92 and we are the only company that provides ultra wide field imaging technology in the world. Uh, the images we produce are called Optimap and they provide optometrists and ophthalmologists with more clinical information, which facilitates the early detection, uh, more effective management and treatment of disorders and diseases within the retina. We have over a thousand published and ongoing clinical trials and studies which really validate the benefits of Optos and Optimap and uh, the long-term value in them as well, and also for engaging with patients. These can be seen on our website, optos.com. The three reasons I would say to invest in Optos are, number one, to provide that higher level of clinical care to your patients. The technology allows you to see much more of the retina much more easily. Uh, very importantly, in recent times from a safe distance, minimizing patient proximity and face-to-face -face time. It also helps us to find that pathology earlier, treat it earlier and get a better outcome for the patient. We also believe that to differentiate, adapt and evolve your practice stands a business in good stead for success, particularly in a competitive environment. So again, Optimap allows practices to do that, differentiate from the competition, enhance their reputation, reassure their patients and importantly, build extra revenue into the business as well. And thirdly, I would say attract and retain uh, existing patients. Uh, in almost 30 years experience, we've worked with many, many independent practices and optometrists, and we want to support the way that you offer your clinical services. It improves practice efficiency, and as I said, retains existing and attracts new patients. We have a portfolio of devices that are suitable for optometry. So we have Daytona Plus, California, Monaco, all our devices are designed for comfort, speed, efficiency, and importantly, safety. Monaco is the first ultra wide field and OCT technology. Um, so, this is the first in the world to combine ultra wide field imaging with posterior pole OCT. All of our devices produce OptMap images, which capture, capture up to 82% or 200 degrees of the retina, something that no other device is capable of in a single capture. They're captured in less than half a second and through as small as a two millimeter pupil. So this minimizes the need for dilation. Uh, and we are the only true ultra wide field image as defined by the panel of retina specialists with expertise in retinal imaging the International Wide Field Imaging Study Group. So a little example here of how um, two wide field images can miss essential information on the retina. Mm. OptMap also provides three in one color depth imaging. So we use red and green lasers. The green laser scans from the surface of the retina down to the RPE. The red laser scans beneath the RPE down to the choroid. Uh, this means you can visualize those lasers as separate visualizations. So our imaging modalities include color, red free, green free, which is choroid, and autofluorescence. And as I mentioned, depiction here of the California device being used, stood nice and far away from the patient comfort, speed, efficiency, and safety. Optos offer their customers a lot of support. Um, I'm very proud to say that my team and myself are very passionate about supporting our customers. We not only have an awful lot of marketing tools that we can provide you with to communicate with your patients the reason why they should have an Optimap at every eye exam, but you know my team are very accomplished at implementing Optimap into practices seamlessly, and setting everybody up for success. We have lots of clinical support. We understand that when you start to see Optimap images that you will perhaps see pathology that you might not have seen out in the periphery for a long time. Um, and certainly, you know, we want you to feel supported um, and not overwhelmed by anything. So we have lots of webinars. We have an Optimap forum where you can speak with your peers about anything that you may be seeing on any images. And that works very well. 
quick financial illustration, very important. We don't underestimate the investment that somebody makes when they take on an Optimap device. Um, you know, whether it be Optimap or OCT, it's a significant investment into a practice. So here we have some quite conservative figures. If we were to charge £25 per patient, four patients per day over a five day test week, 1.9 patients per day breaks even. So even at these conservative numbers, we have a valuable profit monthly and annually. And that's multiplied if you look at more patients per day. And again, more patients per day. So this is something that we can go into more on a one on one. No problem. So um, on our website, we also have, uh, as I mentioned earlier, quite a lot of testimonials. I think it's really powerful to listen to what your peers are saying about our technology. Um, so here's an example from Rosemary. Um, the reason why I picked her example is she is um, a single testing one opt on practice. Uh, so in her words, if she, she can make it work, then you know she doesn't know who wouldn't be able to make it work. So very quickly, next steps, talk to us. Um, we're here to help and support. Uh, you can email me with contact details, practice name and postcode. Uh, and one of my very lovely team will be in touch to discuss what options would be suitable for you. Um, you can find out for yourself what Optimap technology can do for you and your practice. There is no obligation and no pressure. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon. JC? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Well, a little, little bit, bit over. A little bit over. Oh. Not much, though. Not much. Okay, okay. So you, you have taken Brett six seconds then? I think I, I thought I might. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well done. No, that's fine. It's okay. We're, we're happy with that. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. It's a pleasure. Okay, so we've got Emily next. Let's see if we can get Emily on. Here we go. Right, Emily, are we ready to roll? Let's do it. So, uh, Emily Andrews from iSpace Eyewear as product director of the award-winning company iSpace Eyewear. Emily brings years of experience from the practice to optical houses worldwide, works as part of the senior team on the design and development of the collections, as well as the associated print and digital marketing. Emily is skilled in negotiation, sales and product development. And Emily will be presenting, will be telling us about iSpace's new collection, Eco Conscious Eyewear Collection. So, right, Emily, your two minutes, okay, and then you've got to do your little life hack app or book first, please. Brilliant. Well, thank you ever so much for giving me the time to talk to everyone this evening. Um, yes. As you said, my name is Emily Andrews. I'm product director Andrew. at iSpace Eyewear. Um, I've been in the optical industry for over 13 years and with iSpace since its inception, which is unbelievably seven years ago. Um, my life hack um, to share would be as the seasons are changing. Um, I think everyone's noticed the colder weather coming in for the past week or so in particular. I would be to look at supplementing with vitamin D. Um, vitamin D is well known for the absorption of calcium, um, but it also can support the immune system as well. Um, and there's increasing evidence showing it's useful in present, preventing colds and flus. Um, I think with everything about to be doing the rounds, um, and bearing in mind that it's very, very hard to absorb naturally this time of year in the UK. It's a very cheap, easy way to boost your immune system. Like it, like it a lot. Great, great idea, good stuff. I think it's a good little reminder, isn't it, with, with the nights drawing in and all this sort of stuff happening now, so that's great. Are you ready to go? Yes, I am. Um, so um, today I'd like to talk about our eco-conscious collection. Um, we launched in January um, this year at 100% Optical. Um, it's been a real passion project for myself and everyone at iSpace. It's something we feel very, very strongly about. Um, but now is the time to sort of reflect on our choices and to do a little bit more to help the world and the environment, environment particularly after we're emerging, hopefully from the pandemic. So the collection we've put together is now 26 pieces already. Um, we have grown it. It is, first and foremost, it is made from a bio-based bio acetate. Uh, this is incredibly important. We looked at many different materials to see sort of what might the best be we'd like to launch into the collection. And we finally settled on bio-based acetate because we felt it had the strongest credentials 
So it is entirely cotton-based, so it comes from a renewable source, and also it has a natural non-toxic plasticizer. Now, this is the thing that really sets it apart from other acetates. So it has the same high quality feel and finish, but rather than having a phthalate as to stabilize it, um, as a plasticizer, it has a natural non-toxic one, which is much, much better for the environment. So the frames themselves were very focused on fashion and design. I'll go through a couple shortly, but there's so much more about this collection. Um, I think that's what we're so proud of is all the other elements we've put into it as well. So the next thing that was very, very important to us was the demo lenses. Now, demo lenses are something that have no purpose. They are thrown away. They're not kept. Um, it's an insane amount of waste and they're very, very hard to recycle. So we have sourced um, a fully biodegradable uh, demo lens. Um, this will biodegrade in under five years, which is less time than a banana skin. Um, and we think it's fantastic for something that is, doesn't have a use and is just thrown away. Uh, looking at the wider package, it's a plastic free uh, packaging. Um, iSpace as a company are trying to do as much as we can at the moment. Um, it's where a lot of our investment energy is going into and for our other collections, we have moved to completely biodegradable frame bags. But for eco-conscious, we are using um, a recyclable FSC certified cardboard pouch, um, and there is no plastic whatsoever used in the packaging. Uh, other things that go with the product along with that include the POS materials. Now with this, we've gone one step further, and again, we've got um, FSC accredited cardboard, um, it's also obviously recyclable, but we've also used vegetable ink as well to again make this as friendly as possible. Um, the other element we really wanted to introduce was to plant a tree with every frame purchased, and we partnered with One Tree Planted, who are a fabulous company. We've already planted several thousand trees. Um, for the first wave, we focused on Australia which in light of the forest fires, which seem like a distant memory now, are still obviously having a huge impact. Um, and the more support we get, the more trees we can plant. And it's something very, very important to us. So moving on to the frames, I will start with Style Ginkgo, which hopefully you can see there. Now, this was a bit of a surprise for us being such a bold model, but this was our best-selling style from the launch collection. I think it's really important to sort of show the frames that are proving most popular and also that we haven't compromised design. The same at the mm. same high quality eye space feel. Um, there's pin detailing, there's a laser etched core wire as well. Um, from the new releases, we have the fabulous fern leaf. If you wouldn't mind clicking onto the next slide, Nathan, this style is available in a fashion forward crystal, but also the eye shape you can see there, it's sort of very, very safe shallow rectangle um, that's particularly flattering on men with rounded face shapes. And this comes in a crystal and a smoke. And then finally, we have Frangipane. This is one of our ladies' new releases. Um, the new releases as well, we're constantly trying to research and improve the collection. Um, one of the things we've done is with the new releases, as well as being more slimline in our response to feedback we've received, we've also used a hinge which has recycled components to it. Um, we haven't compromised on quality. This is coming from a German leader in hinge manufacturing. Um, but it's all these details in the frames. Um, and this star has matte and gloss finishes. Again, that really high quality flex hinge and also tip detailing as well. And then on the last slide, you can hope see there's women's collections, there's the men's collection. I think there's 26 total. And then you can see the fabulous point of sale that's also available. There we go. 20 seconds to spare. There we go. What about that? <laughs> that is amazing. That is really good. That's great stuff. Well done, Emily. No problem. Really great stuff. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Right. Let's go. Right. We're looking for Andy. Let's oh, and get Andy hold on. I've got to bring him back. <laughs> okay. I'm unmuted. <laughs> Andy on board. Andy, I think you're there. You, yeah, if you switch your cam on. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. There you go. There we go. Hi, Andy. We've got you there. That's great. Sorry. That's okay. No worries. Okay. So, 
Andy Clark. So let's give you an, an intro, Andy. Andy is an optometrist and the managing director of Practice Building Limited, uh, which specializes in business support for independent practices. And you guys are celebrating your 10th birthday this year. Congrats. Wow. Yeah. Over that time, he and his team have delivered 7,500 hours of one-to-one -one coaching, delivered 1,000 marketing campaigns, and Andy has spent over 2,500 hours leading workshops. I think you need a rest, Andy. <laughs> okay, a well-known face on the on the conference circuit, uh, speaker circuit. What you may not know about Andy is he's an accomplished guitarist and has own, has over 14 guitars. So over to you, Andy. <laughs> Two minutes about yourself. Two minutes to myself. Uh, you were keen yesterday to tell people how long I'd been in optics and we decided not to. But I will say that when I was in my second year, Bruce Springsteen re released Darkness on the Edge of Town. So that was a long time ago. When I was there at university, I learned one of the most important things in my life. How to be a scuba diving instructor. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, uh, I, I've been diving and I was learning how to do it. And the instructors there told us that putting on a show, putting on a great presentation, a great lecture is a total waste of time if you don't make the learning stick. And it's, it was an important life lesson because that's what we do at practice building. We don't mm -hmm. just do training, we don't do lectures, we work with people and make sure it sticks. So, so that's me, that's how I got to where I am. It was an optometry and scuba diving put together. Mm -hmm. The life hack, there's, um, always make sure that the thing you're doing is getting you closer to the where you want to be was the one I thought of first, but to be honest, it's always drink great tea. Life is too short for bad tea. So all our clients know, and this is an announcement for you if you're watching, we provide them with tea. The latest one is a single state organic Assam, and it's gorgeous. Okay. You know how to get some. Great, that's good stuff. Okay, do you want to, do you want to just make sure your screen's all good? And then we'll start doing the timer. Yeah. There we are. There we go. Lovely, okay. Tell us, tell us when you're ready and we'll start the timer, Andy. Ready to go. Okay, let's go. So, welcome to the new normal of optics. There are, with, with new normals, there's always new problems. And when we've been talking to our clients, they've told us that they have three problems at the moment. They have reduced capacity because they're having to take longer to test eyes. There's a recession, and in a recession, we know that people take longer between eye tests. They convert, uh, or they're less likely to convert, and when they do, they spend less. And we have the recall time bomb which means that if you rely precisely on or uniquely on recall to fill your appointment books in two years time, you won't have anybody to talk to for four months. So with new problems, it's always a good idea to find new solutions. Ours, having worked with our clients, is VIPX, the very important patient being the focus of the thing. And the idea of VIPX is that we achieve three objectives. The objectives being that Patients visit the practice more frequently and the practice is no longer rely on recall uh, to bring people in. The next objective is that we make optometry profitable so that it stands on its own two feet and if you didn't sell another pair of specs, you could actually still keep a, a viable business. And the third objective is that we break the English cycle of having 1.1 pair of spectacles per person and we get people to wear glasses more for different situations and enjoy wearing multiple pairs. How do we do it? Well, we look at the, the, the cycle starts really, or the, the project starts with more visits. And if we were to look at how to get more visits into your practice, if you're not relying on recall, we would suggest that the easiest place to go is to look to your own database and start writing to them and communicating with them in between eye examinations. To do that, you need to create a club and it must be GDPR friendly. Um, which is more than just saying, can I use your email to send you stuff? It must be very compelling. You have to give people a good reason to give them their emails give, yeah, so you can send stuff to them. And we would suggest a triple opt-in, which means that they opt into three different lists, not a single list, which means that if they ever decide to unsubscribe, they probably un only unsubscribe from one list and not three. Once you've created the club, you can and should create personalized messages that go out to people so they've decided which list they want to be in but you can also look at their preferences in terms of how they use their eyes the information that they want to know about send them two or three automatic messages a month either by email sms or postcard depending what they've selected and it should be automatic one of the biggest reasons practices don't do 
direct marketing to their own database very, very much is that they don't have the time to do it. We've managed to make it so that if you spend about 45 minutes every six months, it will automatically run the rest. Once you've got them for more visits, then we should look at how to make profitable optometry or optometry profitable. And this, as you, I'm sure you all know, focuses on bespoke, plan, bespoke planned eye care. The idea with bespoke planned eye care is to say to somebody, well, you could have a very basic test and you're allowed to have one of those every two years, or you could have the very best of eye care on demand when you feel you need it. To do that, you have to be able to look at the profit model that goes with it. And you need to understand your own costs. But more importantly, you have to remember that what something costs you has nothing to do with what the patient will be prepared to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you have to be able to demonstrate the real benefits of bespoke planned eye care. The big benefits, of course, are peace of mind. They're less interested in our equipment than we are, but they're very interested in peace of mind and knowing that they're taking the best possible care of themselves. You also have to be able to train your team to be able to deliver it and explain it, and you have to be able to promote it effectively. Um, consequently, VIPX has all of this built into it, and you need an elegant sign-up process. We would recommend that you get people into a direct debit system so they pay you a very low, affordable amount every month. Um, we have practices at the moment that we work with who are bringing in tens of thousands of pounds every month on direct debits. And interestingly enough, the ones who have the lowest dropout rate and the highest revenue each month none of them give a discount to go with it. Once we've done proper optometry, we can also look at encouraging people to have multiple pairs of spectacles. And there are two things that you need to get multiple pairs just right. The first is marketing, and you use the marketing to educate people about the idea of the fact that they should have multiple pairs, a pair for work, a pair for play, and a pair for the sun, a smart pair, a casual pair, a sun pair, whatever. Um, but also you need to be able to teach your team to recommend appropriately. And so we've got monthly marketing campaigns built into it and team training online for all your teams so you can tra train them when you like. The practices who sell the most pairs per patients also, rec while recommending a great deal, also have two other things. They make sure that the spectacles are affordable. That doesn't mean cheap, it doesn't mean discounts, it doesn't mean special offers. For example, um, we used some of Emily's ranges in a, in a collection that we called Fab and Aff ages ago and had massive success with them. And just to be fair, Brett, forgive me, we used yours as well. Um, and then for the more special pairs, bespoke ones like I'm wearing at the moment, um, look at interest-free credit as a way of uh, encouraging people to have more pairs and making them affordable. People nowadays are used to uh, buying things on monthly payment schemes. So, we have more visits, profitable optometry, multiple pairs. This is a huge project, as you can see, and I don't have time now to explain it properly. There is a handout that you can download, which looks something like this. And if you want to find out more, if you go to our website, practicebuilding.co.uk, and look up VIPX, you can find out all about it and book a call with me, and I will be delighted to tell you more. I don't know whether that's five minutes or not. Brilliant. Seconds over, but only seconds. Well done, Andy, thank you. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> yes, good stuff. It's working well, I tell you. That's great stuff. Thanks, Andy. Thank you. Okay. Right, next picture is Dan. Let's see if we can get Dan on the screen. Am I there now? No way. There we you go. You are. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, Dan, here we go. So this is for you. Uh, Dan Daly. Dan has a degree in physics, a doctorate in medical optics, and is, a, and, and is a strong development professional and holds a master's from Cranfield School of Management with a, manage, with a demonstrated uh, of working with demonstrated working in medical device industries, skilled in business planning, medical devices, biotechnology, and research and development. Dan is the CEO of Acuity.com. Over to you, Dan. Thank you, that's very kind. And thanks everyone else for joining on our Monday evening. I'm sure you'd rather be watching TV or something instead. Um, yeah, so my background, um, uh, I just said, yeah, so my background, first of all, my first degree is in physics, uh, and then PhD in microoptics, so a very techie person, like working at a lab bench, doing creative things. Um, my um, technical work involved in microoptics, which is very, very small lenses. These things were down to about 50 microns in size. So small than a, a human hair, absolutely minute things. 
we're using those to do things like optical imaging, um, optical computing, um, 3D images, a whole range of quite wacky things. Uh, and then moved from there, as you tend to do in your career, moved up into like managing projects, managing people, and doing more commercial work. Uh, I found I quite enjoyed the commercial side of things, so moved on to being much more of a, a project manager, a product manager, uh, and doing that side of things, primarily in the telecoms industry. Uh, and then decided I wanted something a bit more useful, a bit more worthwhile, so moved into the med tech space and started making measurements on the eye. And that's kind of where I am now. Um, in terms of, what was the, the phrase, a life hack, wasn't it, you were looking for? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We've just been recruiting for a cure team. We're roughly doubling our engineering team. So we've been speaking to a whole bunch of very, very skilled guys and girls. Um, and the, the big thing that's come out from that is it's very important to surround yourself by people who are smarter than you are. We've got a whole bunch of PhDs in our books at the moment um, who are far cleverer than I am, which makes my life an awful lot easier. So I think if I had a quick tip for life, surround yourself by very smart people who are better than you are. I like that. I like that a lot. That's great. Fantastic. OK, are you ready to present? Yep, certainly. OK, off you go. Thanks very much. So I say we're, we're acuity limited. Uh, I want to talk through a machine we're developing, a pachymeter, um, but to give some framework for that, explain something about acuity, what we are, where we're going, um, because obviously we're a very new company and you almost certainly haven't heard of us as yet. So we founded acuity last year as a buyout from a previous company. Um, we're focusing on some of the major healthcare problems of our time. Uh, and we're doing so making optical measurements on the eye. Um, so measuring the eye not only for its own sake, to know dimensions of the eye and characteristics of the eye, but also deriving other healthcare conditions by looking at that, that part of the body and deriving other things about what the body is doing and its general level of, of health. And we're focusing on some of the big healthcare problems of our time. So the main areas we're looking at um, long term are, are diabetes and we're developing a machine for people with diabetes to measure their glucose levels non-invasively. So you may be aware that those with diabetes now need to puncture their finger and draw some blood to make a measurement of their glucose. And that's painful and inconvenient, not very nice. Uh, we're working on a machine which you hold up to your eye, it scans light through the eye and gives you completely pain-free reading. So a massive advantage for that, that market there. Before getting to that though, we're looking at screening for diabetes. And that's a major issue because there are now 400 million people worldwide who have pre-diabetes and don't know it. So they're having damage to their body caused by the high levels of glucose without being aware of it. It takes five to 10 years before they get diagnosed. So we're looking there at a device which we use by optician, optometrist in a high street environment, um, which will scan the eye and allow the individual to be told much earlier on whether they've got pre-diabetes or diabetes. And again, the advantage there is the machine being optical, it's completely non-contacting, which is a major advantage for everyone involved in the, in the measurement. But our first device, uh, again, designed for opticians and optometrists, is a non-contacting pachymeter. Um, the goal of that device is it's completely non-contacting, so no need for drops first of all or contact in the eye. The machine just sits in front of the eye and scans optically through the eye and gives a result in a matter of seconds. So a big advantage over the current way of doing things where you need to obviously contact the patient and they're not very keen on that, that idea for obvious reasons. So in all cases, all those three measurements, um, the measurement process is the same. It's a confocal scanning device. Um, so when you scan through the eye for measuring corneal thickness, we simply scan through the cornea, get a reflection from each surface, and that tells us how thick the, the cornea is. When we're looking at screening for diabetes, we scan more deeply into the eye and look at uh, markers in the lens called advanced glycation products, AGEs, which deposit when someone's got high glucose levels. So our machine can scan through the eye with a fluorescent measurement and detect those markers in the lens of the eye. And then for glucose monitoring, we're looking at the glucose level in the aqueous humor, which correlates very well with that in the blood. So in each case there, the measurement process is the same. We're measuring slightly different parts of the, the anterior chamber or the lens of the eye. So, so the first machine we're looking at is a pachymeter. Um, so designed for measuring corneal thickness in a non-contacting fashion. And of course, that's a key advantage in this market. Um, people don't like having their eyes touched by the machine, as you get with ultrasound. And then the more uh, more detailed, more expensive um, optical techniques are tens of thousands of pounds, not really ideal for high street practice. So we look at a machine here which is non-contacting, but at the same price point as the contacting ultrasound devices. Also very compact and handheld, um, so it's very easy to move around between, uh, between rooms or share between opticians. Um, they can also be used either in a handheld format or in a, in a slit lamp chin rest cradle, so it's very convenient to, to use however you wish. 
and it's very fast to use as well. Uh, in our experience, training uh, opticians in this, it takes a few minutes training before they can actually make the measurements, and then the actual process takes around 10 seconds, so a few seconds to align to the eye. So basically, you hold it to the eye, press the, the button there, and it primes it. When it aligns to the eye, it also self-aligns, and it collects the data, so very, very fast. And it's as accurate as the, the current machines, so an excellent combination of parameters there. Uh, release is planned for the first half of next year, so the current prototype is now under tested, undergoing testing, and it's working very well. Um, we'll have the final um, commercial-ready device ready by November of this year, going through clinical trials over Christmas, early part of next year, C marked by Easter, then ready for sale spring Q2 next year. So the chemistry, first of all, but because the, the front of the machine illuminates the eye for the alignment of the eye, we can also do um, patterns onto the cornea and therefore do chemistry as well. And because the machine already images the, uh, the back of the eye, adding in uh, pupillometry is very straightforward. So, keratom, sorry, uh, pupil, uh, pupillometry first of all, but other parameters are adding on to the parameter set as time goes on. So that's the machine. Um, we're looking at some long-term major healthcare issues, not only in, on the eye, but also in the rest of the body. The first machine is pachymeter for measuring corneal thickness, but we're branching out from that into pupillometry and keratometry as well. Uh, and then more broadly, uh, looking at more general healthcare conditions, diabetes being the main one, both for diagnosis and for glucose monitoring for long-term care. I've slightly overstepped my mark there in terms of time, but thank you for your attention. Great. Oh, just then. <laughs> right. Well done. Brilliant. Excellent. Well done. Yes. Indeed. That was fascinating. Okay. So that's all five done uh, there, Nathan. It is indeed. So I think uh, we want to try and bring everyone back now. So bear with me. I'll uh, see if I can do this en masse. There uh, we go. I'm turning everyone's microphone on. Camera requests, hopefully. Hi, yes, everyone's coming back. So good. Good, good, good. Right. Right, there we go. So we're going to do move to QA now. Um, and yeah, uh, hopefully we've got, I think we'll probably get quite a few questions. They were excellent presentations. So well done, everybody. Um, got some good feedback already. Uh, we've had um, Aim Chatu saying, hi, Andy, very good to see you, my friend. Andy is very good. <laughs> uh, so there you go. That's the fan club. We've yeah. Um, we've got a request for uh, for details from Brett, so maybe we can also contact um, put you two together as well. Um, yeah, so people far away with your questions. Um, if anyone's got any questions for each other from the panel, it'd be a good, good time to do that whilst everyone gets ready to, to put their hand up. So I don't know if anyone, uh, I mean, I, I was particularly, well, I, there was one question I had for Emily. Does a banana take five years to, a banana skin? I was going to ask five that. Years to, to degrade. It takes longer. It takes longer to actually break wow. out. Yep. <laughs> Did not know that. Okay. Do you have any other questions, Jay Shree? Yeah, I was going to say that I wanted to ask um, Sharon, you, you know, you were saying about a single practitioner and, you know, lots of, you know, somebody thinking that this this sort of technology isn't isn't doable by a single practitioner. That's quite an interesting. Can you tell us a little bit more about that side of things? You were saying you, you gave an example of somebody, you know, who is a single practitioner and, and they've got an Optos. Yeah, certainly. Um, so the slide that I showed where it was the financial illustration, um, we always try to give conservative figures in terms of, what you need to achieve for an Optimap device to pay for itself and make a profit. Right. Right. Um, and generally, people think that it's, you know, for smaller practices, that it's unattainable. Well, you know, it isn't. And um, I would say that the majority of our customers are, you know, single testing or they're double okay. testing post. Um, and, you know, and they make Optimap pay for itself and make a profit. Um, and that is, you know, that's with all the support that we give them. Um, to help with communication to patients about that, um, mm -hmm. something that Andy might be able to help us with in the future. Um, but, you know, it, it really is attainable, and I think anybody that is thinking about it, you know, mm -hmm. speak to us. We can put you in touch with peers that have been in the position that you're in now, where they're thinking mm -hmm. about taking on Optimap, and they can talk you through, you know, what they did and how they did it. 
Yeah, I think that that could be useful, couldn't it? A little bit of peer support, somebody else to speak to and just touch base and say, how did you find it and how was the journey and that sort of thing. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Brilliant. Nathan? Um, OK, so we've got a question here. Dan, have you got any papers on your product? So, um, yeah, I guess for product information, um, perhaps there's a if, you, if there's something you can supply, we could send out to delegates or something like that. I can provide you a, a, a quick overview, a couple page PDF summary of what we're doing. Um, my details are on the, the last slide of my slide deck. If you're publishing those, then please can contact me directly. I'll um, we'll send you more information. So we're coming, releasing the market spring next year. So we're a little bit early, perhaps, for this, just really you know, raising profiles earlier on. Um, mm. Perhaps send a couple pages PDF out, summarise the instrument, and keep people updated as we get nearer to the product being released. Mm. Exciting yeah. stuff. I, I, uh, just to remind people as well, this this is all recorded, so you can go back and watch it at any time as well. Um, and as Dan said, his details are on there, but we can email out as well your details afterwards. Um, there is a survey at the end as well, so if people do the survey, they can request details from from each of you as well. Um, so, oh, actually, sorry, uh, they've also asked same person um, research papers. Are there any research papers? on your product? Uh, not for the machines here. So for the glucose meter, yes, there are. Uh, similarly, for mm -hmm. the screen devices. Um, for the pachymeter, not as yet. We're currently running the thing, about to run the thing for a clinical trial. So in a couple of months' time, then yes, there'll be more clinical data out there. Brilliant. Cool. OK. Um, Brett, we had a question as well for you, um, which was, well, is about the, what, was, what is the company called? And uh, what do I do if I want to purchase the frames? Um, so yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> excuse me. So the company is called Eyewear Direct. Um, if you want to purchase the frames or see one of our our team, then you can call me on 0207 193 or email inquiries at ashtonreilly.co.uk. Okay, good, nice, Brilliant. Um, I've got a question for Andy. Oh, got him. Yeah. Uh, right. So, Andy, we're, we're in, a, as you say, we are in a bit of a unique situation. Lots of lots of people are not seeing, you know, we're seeing less footfall in terms of patients. Like you say, we're getting more time with patients now in practice, aren't we? So how do we glean all this important information about them to, to try and help them get, as, as we say, an eye care wardrobe? You know, you were saying about different pairs of spectacles. So how do we do that? How, how can we get that uh, through to patients so that they, they realise that actually it is OK to have more than one pair? I love it. Um, the first is you tell them it's a good idea. So, for example, um, you could promote something like a, a, an eye war, a, a style wardrobe and say that people should have a pair for work, a pair for play and a pair for the sun. You could start a dispensing by saying, when are you going to be wearing these? As opposed to some of the other questions, you know, we did a survey last year where we walked into different practices um, just to see how they started dispensings. And more than 60% of the dispensing started with, do you want the same again? Oh, no. Well, what chance have you got of promoting different styles if you do that? Mm -hmm. um, if, if we look at either of the, the, the collections represented on the panel here, they've, they've all got fabulous frames for different styles. Um, so let's start talking about that. Um, we have looked at the, the practices who sell the most specs per patient, and they have specific questions. They talk about style. Um, and they talk about lenses. You know, the, the rule is that for every situation, there's a style, a look, and a lens that makes a perfect combination. And we should have many pairs, yeah. just within arm's reach. I've got another two. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. That's why good. do we no, that's good Because advice. we can afford to. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's about ask, asking open questions, like you say, and not being shy about it and actually saying, yeah, you know, let's just think about it. The thing is, sometimes people do feel a bit, you know, like they're putting people under pressure or they themselves feel under pressure. And really, it's being open about it, isn't it? And asking the right questions and asking. Open questions. Absolutely. It's like the BBC Charter, educate, inform and inspire. It's, it's not sales. It's just tell people what they can do. And yeah. then don't try and sell them everything on day one, on the day of the site test. Get in, mm -hmm. keep, stay in touch with them and invite them back. They might spend a £500 pair here and a £100 there and they'll develop a collection and there are <laughs> most countries in the world do this you know, the average yeah. italian has over three pairs of specs why mm. because they buy them when they want to instead of when we tell them to mm. yeah 
Sorry, um, that's my right. soapbox. I can get on for ages. <laughs> it's great. It's, it's, I think we all feel the same way about that topic. It's uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, Emily, was the question? Yeah, um, I've got one more thing to add. Coming back to something Sharon was saying about um, making things like Optimup pay their way. It's impossible to make optometry profitable without things like Sharon's devices. Um, they're, they're essential. Every one where we know of a practice that's doing very well, where patients are queuing up to buy really high quality service, they have something like one of Sharon's or you know, similar devices. We have mm. to be honest, Sharon, you know, there are other <laughs> available. But, there are, you know, are others that try to do the same. But, they don't. Yeah, but, but if, yeah. if you want your optometry to pay its way, you've got to be offering quality enhanced services. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can't do it without them. Yeah. I'd agree. Um, Emily, so the question for you, um, it, what about the lenses being biodegradable? I'm guessing the question is how, how are they biodegradable? Um, it's when they're in landfill, they will naturally break down. Okay. Um, well, and I guess it, um, so. All the, the, the point of sale does all the the explanation for that, does it? So for for your optician who wants to sort of talk about the the credentials of of the eyewear, it's all on the point of sale. It is yes. Um, if you do happen to have the last slide, it sort of does show there is a hmm. one of the pieces there does have sort of bullet points. It sort of does highlight because there is a lot going on with the the collection hmm. of frames. Um, there is quite a lot to pass on, <laughs> so that's why we sort of created some of the POS to have that information um, for the practice to have on display, so they didn't have to learn it um, effectively at what's readily available. Um, and the point of sale is supplied um, at no cost to the optician as well. Great. Um, Sharon, Sharon, I was going to ask about, um, I guess, you know, have you have you got anecdotal evidence from opticians about how you know how how your your equipment's helped them in the pandemic and with the social distancing that everyone had to learn pretty pretty quickly yeah sure um gosh i could speak for a long time about that so i'll try and keep it short and sweet um we well firstly we had an awful lot of contacts from nhs um so the nhs wanted to use our equipment to support them with social distancing mm -hmm. um and we be for you know actually for um eye clinics or whether it be to you know support patients with um you know immunosuppressed diseases and so on um so we put devices into covid hubs for the nhs um and into quite a few optometry practices as well we move devices around for uh for many practices because they may want they might have had a device in one practice not another um and they wanted to consolidate their patients going to one practice um and you know when when lockdown was kind of eased um you know we had quite a lot of inquiries regarding our technology because of the benefits that it brings um you know for us this is this is normal you know our, our technology has always done this and it will always do it um but it just became more apparent in you know in the current times that's good. I've got a question for Dan. Yep. Can you tell us a little bit more about the the how, how it picks up? Uh, you were talking about the aqueous humor and all of that side of thing. Can you just tell us a little bit more about that, the mechanism of how that works? Sounds yeah. really interesting. So, yeah, so effectively all the cells in the body need glucose to feed them, and the glucose is carried around in the blood plasma. When mm -hmm. the blood plasma gets to the eye, there's a filtration system that means that the aqueous humor is formed of the blood plasma. And it turns over quite rapidly and the correlation with the amount of glucose in the blood and that in the aqueous humour is roughly one to one. So as our system scans through, it measures the refractive index changes in the aqueous humour. That gives you a, a measure of the, the change in, in glucose in that medium. And the advantage wow. of course is that you're measuring something that's inside the body, it has a cuvette effectively, so not affected by outside atmospheric changes. Uh, and the eye being optical, you can get light into it very easily. So it's a, an ideal location to make the measurement. Mm, mm. And how do you see this moving forward then with optometrists? Do you see lots more of this sort of thing happening? Do you think this is the way forward for optometry practices? I think it's an opportunity, yeah. So rather than just measuring the eye to understand the eye, the ability to do diagnose, screen, form, monitor other things happening in the body via the eye is a great opportunity. So the move now is moving from doing um, you know, optical measurements into doing um, acoustic measurements as well, so hearing tests branching out to more general healthcare screening. So we're looking at diabetes first of all. There are also marks for Alzheimer's disease in the eye. 
So you can imagine a suite of measurements, broad healthcare screening devices uh, that optoms can use uh, you know, to enhance their practice. Mm, great stuff. So the future is there. It's coming, isn't it? By the sound of it. Very much, Very much yeah. so. Good stuff. Good stuff. Right. Anything Brilliant. else, uh, Nathan? Um, no, I mean, I've got a few people wanting to be contacted. So um, I've got Brett and Emily. I've got someone who wants to talk to you about. I think I know what it is. It, I won't say what it is because it, they probably don't want to divulge, but it's an interesting opportunity. Um, that sounds very cryptic. Uh, there's a few other people asking for details, but we can supply those to you. So um, that's it. I think, um, yeah, I've got one, I mean, more. We've got one more from J3. Yeah, we've, yeah. we've literally got the hour. So. Maybe we yeah. would say this is the last one. Sure. Yeah, it's for Brett. Can you tell us more about the fact that you say you, you make ranges for other people? So tell, tell us about that. Um, so my history and uh, where I started, a lot of what Fabrice Lane did was designing and manufacturing products for other brands, uh, whether that's high street retailers or other optical brands and other, re other optical retailers. So throughout my career, I've been involved in that and I wear direct also manufactures fashion sunglasses for a number of high street fashion retailers um, all over the world. We've got um, companies in the US, Europe uh, and Asia as well that we're manufacturing for. Brilliant. Wow. OK, good stuff. OK, there you go, Nathan. Um, Brett, Brett um, could you give out your phone number? <laughs> Someone's asking for your phone number. Hey, who's asking? <laughs> Uh, it is 020-719-3334. You have to think about that. I did. Put me on the spot. I was going to give my mobile out, but I wasn't sure that was appropriate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Cool. So, um, yeah, that's. I think that's brought us to an hour. And thank you for some uh, excellent presentations today. I thought everyone did... Uh, an amazing job and um yeah uh, thank you for all, all being really good on the timekeeping as well so um it all, all that sort of leads me to sort of remind people i suppose is is to um is to fill in the survey so when this webinar closes or when you leave you'll get a survey which just um if you want to get information from our speakers then um if you tick that then we can provide details to connect you um yeah i think that's it from us so thank you very much everyone Bye now. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Take care. Bye. 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 B